Hello, gentle people. Whether this is your first time visiting my channel or you're a returning subscriber, welcome to this Sparrow Art Vibes video tutorial. I hope that you'll find inspiration here and create something beautiful. I'm Hazel, a retired educator turned resin artist, and I like the title, or I'm aspiring to be an entrepreneur. Every week I share how I create the products available in my Etsy shop. As always, if you like what you see but don't want to take the time to make it yourself, feel free to purchase it at Sparrow Art Vibes Shop on Etsy. You can pause the video and scan the QR code on the screen if you want to visit my shop. And if my video inspires you, please like, comment, share, and of course subscribe. So this week I created a set of personalized Trinidadian dominoes, but that is not what this video is about. The thing is, I made a major, a major mistake and ruined a whole lot of resin. So I thought I'd share my effort, um, my effort to fix my mistake to not totally waste 200 milliliters of resin. So I'm not doing a materials list. I'm just going to show you my disaster and my solution that actually turned out to work. So uh, take a look. This is my order for some Trinidadian dominoes, personalized. Uh, you can see, uh, you can see I have the flag. Uh, the name under the flag, a couple of variations of the flag. There's one, there's one, there's one. Okay, and you see the name. So that's uh, the dominoes before I take them out and put the uh, paint the pips and the lines. These are the pieces for the storage box. Now, I just purchased a brand new resin the Promise Tabletop uh, Epoxy and Hardener and um, read the directions like I always do and somehow I got tied up. Okay, so here what? I poured the front just fine. I poured the bottom just fine. And then I started trying to pour the lid and it was trying to get that black and that white, those lines, uh, not to blend in. I spent a lot of time, so by the time I got over here to do the back and the sides, my resin had started thickening. And you see the outcome. Globs. And not only globs, but all of it's all connected. You see that? It's all connected, so I am going to have to cut these three pieces apart, and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to save uh, these three pieces. I am not throwing, well, what I did actually, I had these globs here, and then I went and poured, because uh, this started globbing and just like making like super big mess. And so I went and poured more resin to fill this and so what I'm going to do now is cut these apart these three pieces I have to cut these apart and then I'm going to cut these globs cut them and then sand them so that I can save these pieces so stay tuned to see how I do my save Gentle people, um, I thought about this last night, trying to figure out how to um, salvage this. Um, and what I think, uh, first thing I need to do is get these three pieces separated. So I'm gonna use my Dremel and kind of cut through this. Um, and then what I, what I have in my mind to do is see if I can just shave this off. I mean, I don't, 
you can, I mean, you can see all of that. And I'm going to see if I can like take my Dremel and just shave it down. Um, so we'll see if what I have in my, my mind will work. So first of all, let's get my Dremel. And I have all kinds of, um, I have all kinds of kits here that have attachments on them. And I am going to use this blade and see if that will work. Okay guys, so let's see if what I have in my mind will actually work. I don't know, but I am going to try to separate these. Let's see if I can, where are my goggles? Oop, can't do this without goggles. Goggles. All right, so let's see if I can cut through this. You see dust going all over the place. I think this is going to be harder than I planned because I need to hold the vacuum and I need to... trying not to cut my moles. Let me see. I am trying not to cut my moles. This needs some more cutting and this.
we got one piece, one piece loose here. Um, all right, one piece is loose. Let's see about um, trimming some of this off. Let's see if what I have in my mind will actually work. I had a neighbor who did woodworking stuff and I know I could probably give this to him he could put this on one of his saws that has like um I think they call it planing anybody who's watching this who knows woodworking will know what I'm talking about and you just put this there and then you slide it through and it just slices off whatever is on top so I'm kind of like manually planing, I guess is what you want to say I'm trying to do here. Um, but I'm trying. I'm trying. We'll see. Alright, I'm almost down to be able to see the mold. I have this spot up here and I have this right here. Let me see. I mean, somebody would say just take it out of the mold and just re pour it, but resin is so very expensive. Um, I would rather take the time at this point since I don't have another order immediate well I've got orders but I've got time to I've got time to fix them okay so you know what I'm going to do now I'm going to try sanding that hmm I don't have any coarse I don't have any coarse well, I'll sand, I'll sand later. I've got to go get some new 
these are all fine. These are, this is a 120, this is a 240. Um, that's a 240 and this is a 120 as well. So I don't have any coarse, um, so we'll work on sanding that after, ooh, we'll work on trying to sand this after I get these other two pieces apart. Um, yeah, let's try and get these other two pieces apart. Voila, these two are apart. All right, let's see if we can get, uh, get this stuff off of here. Hmm. I don't even know where that piece just went to. But it's off, that's all that's important. And somebody watching this who, who has tools in their arsenal will say, oh, you should have done this and you should have done this, but I have to work with the tools that I have in front of me and my Dremel is my most trusty. My Dremel is, look at that, very good. So obviously you don't have to sit and watch me do this. You can come back when I have finished, but just know that I am really taking my time trying to knock some of this down. Um, because again, I'm not throwing, I refuse to throw this out. All right, let's try cutting this direction. Okay, so I've knocked down quite a bit of that. Um, that looks pretty good. So now let me try to work on this one. Okay guys, so I have managed to separate these three pieces 
And uh, what I'm going to do now is just sand these down, but I have to turn off the video and I have to um, go to Home Depot because again, my, um, my, what do you call these? These little sanding triangle thingies. Um, this is an assortment and I need like a 80, a 60 or a 80 to be able to sand that down. So I'm gonna turn off the video and I'm going to Home Depot like this is a 240. This is a, what did I say this was? This is a 120. Um, and I need something that's much more coarse than this to, to knock that down. So I'm gonna clean my hands off, turn this video off, head to Home Depot and I will be back in a little while. Gentle people, I am back. Let me move some of this stuff out the way. And um, I have a brand new box of 60 grit. Again, these that I had were, uh, what did I say, a 240. What are these in here? Yeah, there's a 240, there's a 120. So again, I needed something more coarse, and so I ran to Home Depot. And these, these are Dremel, but these were what they had. They didn't have any Dremel in stock, so I got these Diablo. So we'll open these. Oh, these don't have the loops on the back. Uh, that's okay. <clears throat> these do not have loops. These, what is this? Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, my Dremel ones have kind of a, this is like almost like a Velcro back on this. Uh, but that's all right, we don't, we don't care. We just need to be able to get this done. So, so we are going to take this off of here. And again, this is a, and I hope this will stay on here. We'll find out in a minute. And so, again, it's hard to um, do this and, let me see, which one do I want? Hard to do this and hold the, um, the vacuum at the same time. So I am just going to get started with this and see what happens. It's, um, it's knocking something, it's knocking it. Well, I can tell you I don't like this adhesive because it's not really designed for this, but we're gonna make it do. This is what they had, so this is what we do. And I don't know if you can see the difference in the height. Let me see if I turn it that way. Maybe you can see the difference in the height on this side versus this side. So this is what we're trying to knock down right now. Well, this is gonna be harder than I thought. Ooh. you can now just fast forward through this um, while I continue to work with this this is not uh, this is not staying because it's not the one to go on here but it's what they had it's what I bought so yeah go do something else and when you come back I'll have this one done <laughs>
right that clearly is not dumb as high as it was and I've got these edges over here right along the edge of the mold let's try and knock those down a little bit more Okay, so I'm satisfied. One piece done. One piece is done. Look at that. That's not, I mean, you have to decide whether the cost of the resin is more important or your time. Uh, you know, you can just take this out and just re-pour it. Um, I decided I would see if I could save it. Um, and I'm pleased with what I'm doing, except for the fact that I have the wrong kind of triangles on here. All right, let's try and sand this one. Okay, so this is a little bit easier because now I know what I'm doing. I'm eyeballing this. I've got a little, I have a little raised area here. I have a little raised area there. And I guess a little piece here. So let's see if I can knock those two corners down right there. some little nooks and crannies and I'm using the toothbrush to get any resin dust out of the nooks and crannies. That one's pretty smooth. All right, you all may not have agreed with doing this. You'd have just taken it out, thrown this away. Um, but if I can save resin and I have the time, then that's what I'm going to do. I mean, resin is expensive. So when you mess up like I did. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I do believe I am... Okay, so after we did the first, after I did the first one, it was easier to do these other two because then I knew what the heck I was doing. Um, but yeah, and again, we're not trying to level this. We're trying to knock the, the clumps off and those clumps are gone. Yep. Clumps are gone. Okay, so let me just... Okay, so what I am going to do now is mix some resin and I am going to just basically pour, I guess you consider it like a, a, a top coat on these. And everybody knows my table is not level, so I'm just sticking a stick under here to I am guesstimating that I probably don't need more than 20 milligrams, um, milligrams, my God, milligrams, milliliters. All right, so I don't think I need more than, I probably don't need more than 20 milliliters of resin to level this out, but we're going to do We'll do 40 and I can make bookmarks or something. Uh, let's move that over there. So, yeah, I'm sure I only need 20, 
but as soon as I say I only need 20, I'll actually need 30, and you can't mix 30 on here because there is no 15. So I'm just going to do 40, and I'll use the rest for something else. So this is the Promise Part B Hardener. The Promise Part B Hardener. We're going to do 20 milliliters. And the Part A resin or epoxy. Different companies even use different terminology. So 20 milliliters of this. And I'm doing a six minute mix. So again, you don't have to watch me mix this. Watching me stir is like watching grass grow or ice cream melt or something. You don't have to watch this. Actually, to speed up, I am going to pour this into a paper cup because I need to mix the resin and I am going to color and mix at the same time. Save myself a step. I am using the I am using the eye candy Baku Red. And we don't have to worry about these colors matching exactly because remember this is on the inside of the box. This is going to be on the inside. So now let's get this mixed up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just pour this resin onto these pieces to level them out. And I'm going to use my spatula. Okay, so what I'm doing is pouring some of this off because I don't want this to be too tall, be higher than, because then the pieces won't fit correctly. I don't want to solve one problem and then create another one. So I'm just pouring some of this off of here because I don't need this to be too high. And of course, you know resin is self-leveling so if I pour this off, all right, so I'm just gonna hit that with the heat gun to see how that settles. So when I said I probably only need 20, I probably only need 20. I sanded this pretty darn level. And actually, as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking I can even pour some of this off of here onto this one. Watch me. Okay, and 
then on this one I don't know if you can see this one had more holes in it there's a hole there there's a hole there there was one under here so I'm going to push this in to fill these holes push this resin in to fill these holes This needs a little more. All right, so let's hit this with the heat gun and see how this levels out before I add more to that one. Okay, so we need a dab right here. We need a drop right there. Okay, so that hole right there Is not filled down there look at that that is not level down there all right that's what I'm talking about Okay, I think I like this. It took more time than I thought, but uh, part of that is because I don't have the necessary tools to do what I had in my mind to do, but what I've done will work just fine. And yeah, I mixed 40, so I have about 20. I have about 20 milliliters, so when I said I don't think I need more than 20, um, I was correct. I don't need more than 20, but I'd rather have more and use it like in a bookmark or something, the rest of it in a bookmark, than to not have enough. Since this was something I was strictly measuring by eye. Alright, I think it looks like all my corners are done. Yep, I like that. I like that. Yes, I like that. So let's hit it with the heat gun to get rid of air bubbles. Now why do I have a little rascal right there? You little ornery thing. Okay, those look nice. The little spot I missed right there sanding, but so on the inside, that does not affect the use or the wear or anything. I am satisfied. I like this. I have solved my problem. All right, that looks good. I am back. Let's get the cover off of this. <clears throat> and so these are our three pieces that we were trying to save. So what we're going to do now is unmold. Well, let me get the others as well. So we are now going to unmold these. And then our other good pieces 
right, so those are our pieces. I always sand the edge of the lid um, because this is the piece that people handle all the time. So I sand this edge. So let's get that done. And so now we assemble our pieces. And I use the E6000. <clears throat> when I put this together, you'll see how, how tight, how tight this really is. And I add uh, adhesive to these tab spaces. And you can see how tight this is. If you need help getting it in, a hammer will do. And then once that's in, paper towel with alcohol on it to wipe any excess glue that might have leaked out, squeezed out. Then we do this side. And then we turn it over. We add our lid <clears throat> into that notch. Oops. So we put adhesive on this side. And again, adhesive on the notches on this side. I have the sniffles this morning. I'm not sure what. Smooth that out some so it's even. Smooth this out. And if I had a nozzle, my, my um, E6000 container does not have a nozzle. So that's why I have to do this. We are going to then set the lid in there. And I always put something behind this just to keep it from falling forward. And then we're going to put the other side on. Do that then make sure you lift that <clears throat> because this has to fit into that hole there we go all right that's what I'm talking about okay and so now we turn it over and then we <clears throat> and then we add adhesive and put the front piece on so it's one side it's the back to the bottom, one side, the other side, with the lid, and then the front. And so again, and then we attach our front piece. So there are all our pieces. Again, while you can, wipe away any excess glue. And so, there is your assembled box.
Now, to make sure that all of this stays like it's supposed to, I then go back and I put rubber bands on this entire box. You don't have to do this, but I wanna make sure that all my seams are nice and tight. And so I go back and I rubber band my entire box together. You do not have to do this, but this way I know my seams are tight. They are going to stay. I don't have any gaps. Any excess glue will squeeze out. So basically I'm putting a rubber band on every seam here. just holds this nice in fact I don't know if you could just see right here where some of the excess adhesive just squeezed out of there because this is nice and tight We put enough pressure on this to hold that tight. All right, and then just double check visually <clears throat> to make sure you have no gaps. If you do, just use your hammer to put stuff in place. This all looks good to me. All right, there we go nicely assembled and we will allow that to dry or cure or whatever you call it with adhesive but that's our box gentle people what we need to do now is uh get these rubber bands off of here and get this uh finished So there is our box and so what we need to do now is just take some uh, acetone and get rid of clean off any uh, loose any smeared I'm saying smeared any extra uh, adhesive that's on here so that this is sparkly and shiny okay and I have um, acetone in this bottle. It's a pump bottle, but the pump is not working. So I am simply going to have to put some acetone on here. And if you have any that's thick, like I've got a little, little glob right here, just take a razor blade, trim that, and just cut that right out of there. see this right here I've got a little where the, the adhesive pushed out got a little ball here and a little ball here and so we are simply going to we've got a clump right there all right so once you have that done then we're just going to you can see where it looks white that's adhesive that we're going to get off of here. And on the other side, again, you can see adhesive. You can see the adhesive there. All right, so our box is clean. And so now we need to put our rubber bumps on here. I always use the 3M rubber bumps uh, because they are clear, they are self-adhesive, they are non-skid. And so when we put these on, we don't put them in the corner. We put them about, ooh, almost a half inch, about three quarters, about 
a little more than a quarter of an inch inside. Okay, and so the rubber bumps are on. And then the last thing we need to do is, oh, something else before we um, apply the name. Let me just show you, when you clamp this with the rubber bands, let me see, you sometimes wind up with little dents. Let me see. Uh, okay, there you can see the indentation. See where the light is hitting? Those little indentations from where the rubber bands were. And so what we do to get rid of that is just heat the edge of the box. Because this resin does not have a full cure on it, we can take our heat gun, we can run our heat gun along that edge, and what will happen is the resin, the resin will warm up and it will start to expand. And the secret here is to keep this heat moving you don't want it to stop in one spot and maybe scorch your resin. You just need that resin to be warm enough that it will start to expand. Okay, and now my edges, my edges look good. Okay. So there we go. And then the name has already been cut out in vinyl. And so we're going to place the name right down here in the bottom. So most of the name is in the red. So our name is in vinyl. We have our transfer tape. And this is permanent vinyl. I am using the Oracal 851. And this is sparkling, this is sparkling glitter metallic vinyl. Oracal 851 sparkling glitter metallic vinyl in black. And so what I do now is I take this outside and I spray this. Let me go get the spray. And so I am going to take this out back. Uh, this. Okay, and my vinyl. Here it says for out indoor and outdoor use. And it says it is permanent. So this is not like a removable vinyl. Once you put this down, this stays. Okay, so again, this is permanent, so this isn't coming off once it's on here, but to make sure since this is being handled, I'm going to take this out back and I'm going to spray it with the um, gloss clear sealer, that's what I'm trying to say. Alrighty, and then we are done.